everybody, ladies and gentlemen. My guest tonight is a brilliant journalist who serves as CBS News chief political analyst and the anchor of CBS News Prime Time with John Dickerson. Please welcome back to the Late Show, Mr. John Dickerson. <laughs> John, uh, it's good to see you again. Always nice to uh, chew the fat over these big uh, political events with you. You, you. you know these things better than anybody out there. And you are specifically Mr. Presidency. You wrote the book, The Hardest Job in the World, about the presidency. Um, the State of the Union is a, a unique presidential tool. It's also a spectacle um, and a ritual. Before we get into like the nuts and bolts of what you know Biden talked about tonight, why is this speech such a meaningful thing for the presidency, and why tonight was a specifically a meaningful moment for Joe Biden and this presidential election year? Well, it's meaningful because it's in the Constitution, so that gives it, gives it some weight. Well, the speech isn't in the Constitution. Sure. Just a State of the Union should be sent from the president to Congress, right? He doesn't have to give the speech. He's done his homework. Yes. <laughs> exactly right. Um, and in fact, all right, we're going to go down that road. So I you don't so. have to give the, the speech in person. Thomas Jefferson said, you know what? It smacks too much of the monarchy. Why does that matter? So he didn't give it in person. He wrote it. He also thought it was kind of a hassle to walk over there. But this is important. <laughs> this is, no, seriously, that's what he wrote in his letters. But this is what's really interesting to me is when you look at that, and then Woodrow Wilson brought it back, doing it in person. And then LBJ figured out he knew how to put on a show, and so he made it into a, into a, a theatrical moment. Former president is arguing that he should have total immunity in the office. This speech that Thomas Jefferson said looked too much like the monarchy, so I don't want to give it in person, that's the way the founders thought about the office. You shouldn't, it shouldn't look anything like a monarchy. So the, so the idea that a president would have total immunity in an office that Thomas Jefferson thought would look too much like a king if you spoke before Congress, that gives you a sense of the distance between what a claim of total immunity is and the way the founders thought about the job in the beginning. So, well framed, well framed, Mr. Dickerson. I didn't realize we were going down that no, road I so fast. No, I all the roads but... with you. Okay, but so now why for Joe B Biden in this election year was this an important moment? Well, it's an important moment. Look, it ringed around the Capitol where Joe Biden had gone to so many previous State of the Unions were eight foot high black fences as a result of the attack on January 6th. This speech given in that place, in that marble hall that was attacked, on January 6, 2021, started his presidency. I mean, it didn't exactly, he wasn't inaugurated yet, but it started this period of time that we are in. So every ritual of democracy that takes place in a healthy fashion re-knits those bonds that were torn up on the 6th. And he was there to remind people that that happened and that those stakes are still real. I well, mean- He talked about a lot of stakes. He, he came in really hot tonight. He started off with FDR in 1941. What's, what's the purpose there? You can't, if you were gonna set the stakes for a political moment, you can't set them any higher than 1941 fighting before World War II. So he set them immediately, he started in fifth gear. I and mean, he drives a Corvette. <laughs> right, so he knows. He knows he how knows, to do that, yeah. He knows fifth gear. The only other historical moment that you would pick that has equal weight is the Civil War, and he name checked that too, and why? He is calling on the ghosts of January 6th, which aren't even ghosts. There are people in that room there who helped that happen. Including Mike Johnson over his shoulder, who was and, the one trying to get the fake electors allowed. And, the, and one of America's leading political parties in a democracy has just nominated or is going to nominate in a democracy to be their candidate, someone who has worked actively to undermine democracy. So that's real, that's happening. That's what this election is right now. That's not, I mean, if you look at what was said by the leaders of the Republican Party about Donald Trump's role in January 6th, they said he was responsible for it. That he, um, as Mitch McConnell said in the past, he fed the mob lies. That it was a disgraceful dereliction of duty. That's now who is Joe Biden's opponent. And so it is perfectly reasonable to raise the greatest attack on democracy at that building since 1814. Now, just as long as you brought up the name, I wasn't going to bring up Mitch McConnell, but he said all those things about Trump, and then he endorsed him this week. Yeah. For even someone like you who has covered Washington for so many years, did that surprise you? Well, it, 
that, that's no fair because we've never had an attack on the Capitol by the supporters of a candidate before. So I'm not being funny. I sound like Biden, don't I? In all yeah. seriousness, but it, uh, no, but we've never had that situation. So what strikes me is when McConnell spoke out against Trump, and he did it several times after the attacks of January 6th, he said that he was morally responsible for the attack. He said that it was a, uh, a dereliction of duty, disgracefully, said the word twice. What was striking about that moment is there were many Republicans who didn't say boo. They might have been scared of retribution from Trump's supporters. They might have just not had a conscience. But, but McConnell broke with his party and his president. And that's, that's a big deal. A lot of people in his party didn't. And when George Washington left office, he said, you know, I'm really worried about political parties. Because what will happen is people will care more about their faction, about their political party, than they will the country. And so you don't want to have political parties have such amazing power. So Mitch McConnell broke with that. But then in supporting Donald Trump, who he said had a disgraceful dereliction of duty, he has unwound that. And so he's now picking his party over what he had done previously, which was to make a moral case about something that went beyond party, but that was, that was an attack on the country. Well, I want, I want to get into next very specific things that Biden talked about and some of the, 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 the things that he has both promised and uh, talked about uh, needing legislation on. We have to take a quick break, but don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more John Dickerson and the live State of the Union show. Here's the 